an African American couple uh, making a decision that for an entire year it will only patronize black owned businesses. Hey, hey, This is a social initiative and an experiment uh, where we have essentially become uh, guinea pigs uh, to follow, uh, you know, and try to prove out uh, from an empirical perspective, uh, you know, how self-help economics can ultimately help the African American community. We want. Uh, people all over America to be able to buy from black businesses. And I, and I think that until the black community takes some ownership and tries to, to give the black, bin, black businesses a chance to even make it and grow, uh, that, that kind of thing is never going to happen. Sometimes it seems, sometimes it seems, we'll touch that dream, we'll touch that dream. But things come slow and not at all. They come slow and the ones on top won't make it stop. How will they do it and why? We'll let them tell you their story. Hey, honey. At first glance, John and Maggie Anderson and their two kids are like any successful middle-class American family. Maggie, a stay-at-home mom, is a business consultant with two degrees, an MBA and a law degree from the University of Chicago. John, a financial advisor, holds degrees from Harvard and Northwestern's Kellogg School of Management. We came up with this concept probably about four years ago, before we had children. Uh, we were living in Hyde Park and just talking about how we can better serve our community. And we started thinking about, well, instead of talking about it all the time, why don't we do something? So we just said, you know what? Next year, we are going to only support black businesses and black professionals to start really pushing more of our money back into the black community. One Illinois cu couple says they want to solve what they call the crisis in the black community. They want to, as they say, buy black. The African-American couple from Oak Park travel farther than they need to in order to make purchases from black-owned businesses. Good to have you both with us. What, what got you? What got you doing this, guys? Well, actually, um, this uh, this pledge uh, came out of a, a conversation that happens in a lot of um, African American black middle class households. We just we're talking about ways we can give back to our community, and uh, for us, we were just uh, very frustrated with the asymmetry between all of the awesome black talent all of these wonderful black resources this approaching now one trillion dollars in black buying power and what's actually reinvested in and represented in our community so our frustration with that asymmetry and are just wondering if we just try to support black businesses maybe we can do something to give back to those underserved communities we, we care about and come from a Chicago couple uh, is uh, conducting an economic experiment. They're trying to make all of their purchases from black-owned businesses. Here's the question, can they do it? Here's another question, should they do it? CNN's Susan Rose, Jen has details. We also need some shrimp. Maggie Anderson better have all the items on her list before she leaves the supermarket. Because if she doesn't, it's a long way back. Anderson has to drive 20 minutes from her home to the only grocery where she'll shop, the one that has a black owner. She'll also drive out of her way to eat at a black-owned restaurant, get clothes cleaned at a black-owned dry cleaners, and keep her money in a black-owned bank. You know what, she's... Maggie and her husband, John, have made a public pledge to try to buy only from black-owned businesses for one year. They call it the empowerment experiment empowering black communities by supporting their businesses. Critics call it an experiment in racism. We're not advocating that anybody uh, make purchases along racial lines. Okay, that's, that's not what we're advocating. What we are advocating, though, is that African Americans do have a higher sense of duty 
to uh, support black businesses that are investing in the community. A bunch of farmers best in there, the grocer. And Three months into their one-year experiment, the Andersons admit they have not been able to buy everything they need from black-owned businesses, for not even close. The biggest monthly checks for the mortgage and utilities still go to anonymous, faceless corporations. But the goal is the same. At the end of the day, this is just about people uh, in an African-American community getting that getting their representative share of the American dream. How do you pitch people on this? Maggie, I'll start off with you. Well, this is about self-help economics. This is about helping our community. And uh, we could have just done this ourselves and not made the pledge public. But we made the pledge public because, yes, we do want to inspire other like-minded, like-situated families Families who have this discussion all the time, what can we do now that we've done something with our lives, what can we do to give back to our community? For those people, we have a creative answer for you. Go out of your way and try to support black businesses so that we can infuse more wealth into underserved communities. That's why we're doing this. We're doing this about infusing wealth into underserved communities. You said why you're doing it. Is it was it because your neighborhood? I mean, you live in Oak Park. That's not a really bad neighborhood. What was, I mean, really, what's the motivation? That's the point. Uh, we live in Oak Park, um, but that's not where we're from. Um, I'm originally from Miami in a, a economically deprived, predominantly black neighborhood, and John, the same thing, only in Detroit. And that we live in Oak Park now, and we both have MBAs and are successful business professionals. We've seen basically what you can say the the plight and the potential of black business. And what's frustrating for us is the asymmetry between uh, black talent and black resources, all of that outstanding talent and resources that we see every day, and what's actually invested in, reinvested in, and represented in the black community. So okay. we want to make sure that we, we do something about that asymmetry. And I read that you thought that um, even some people you knew, some others that you didn't know, uh, trying to start businesses, African Americans, they weren't taken seriously or they weren't viable businesses because they couldn't get enough people to go along with them. One reason behind this? Uh, well, to the extent that that has to do with us, uh, we have to cure that. We do believe that, of course, uh, the the, the, the crazy failure rates of black businesses and mm -hmm. the difficulty it is to get one started may have to do uh, with our history here and lack of access to capital and okay. uh, networks. But to the extent that it has to do with black, uh, predominantly middle class folks, not supporting those businesses uh, because of stereotypes or okay. just not knowing that they're there, that's a problem. Let's love ourselves and we can fail. We just can't imagine now not every day doing something to support our community. Just in buying groceries, in going to the gas station, in opening a checking account. For us to be able to feel that on that small level uh, is, is, is just absolutely cathartic. I mean, we've changed forever. Thank you so much. At the end of the day, it's about building and creating resources, building and creating wealth, which obviously is a, a huge charge uh, of the Urban League. So as urban communities and urban development proliferate, then we win as a society. We spent about $5,000 so far. I hope that other families will start doing what we're doing and that at the end of the year, we can showcase to the world millions of dollars directly infused into black communities. People think differently about black business now. People are talking about economic development in the black community. People have hope, and we have an example of what we did. Look at these millions of dollars. What is meant to be